Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional family systems therapist for 31 years. And over and above that, I have been very, very interested in trying to understand interpersonal communication. I've been studying that for well over 40 years. This is one of a series of videos that I want to make to pass on to you what I have learned during those, during those many years about effective communication. In this video, I want to pass on to you a skill or a technique that you can learn to use when you have a very common relationship problem, as we all do. I bet across your years you have encountered a number of people that you would say were unpleasant or obnoxious or rude or unfriendly. Uh, or bothered you in some way. Question, how do you respond to such a person like that? What's the best way to respond? You probably, unless you've studied this question, which most people haven't, you have probably unconsciously evolved a preferred way of dealing with somebody who is unpleasant or rude or unfriendly. You uh, may ignore them, you may numb out, you may get angry, you may irritate, uh, indicate irritation or frustration, you may name call, you may judge, you may criticize, you may growl, uh, you may leave, you may avoid them. Everybody has a unique way of dealing with unpleasant people. Many or most of these ways, if they're not conscious or intentional, they're automatic. They risk um, creating in the other person feelings of hurt and confusion and resentment and anger, and that can lead to counterattacks and more unpleasant behavior, and that can spiral into lose-lose interactions between both people at the moment or over time. Has that ever happened to you? If so, I want to offer you a better way. Before I do, let me ask you to first view this video. It's brief and it outlines six requisites for effective communication. You should know this with all people, not just unpleasant people. So take a few minutes, um, see these six requisites, and then come back here. Welcome back. Now, what, what we're doing here is I want to offer you, based on those requisites, a way of using them to positively confront someone that's unpleasant or rude or unfriendly. Um, it starts with, the strategy starts with your having your true self in charge. I hope you at least have an idea of what I'm referring to now. If you want more information on that, see Lesson 1 in my nonprofit website and or see these related videos on learning who's really running your life. Is it a true self, your true self, or is it a false self? So the first thing to do in confronting or reacting with an unpleasant person Make sure your true self is in charge. If a false self is in charge, you're apt to behave in a way that later you'll regret. Then be aware. The second thing to do is pause internally, take a few moments, and ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? As I'm with this other person, what am I feeling? That might you might say to yourself, I'm feeling irritated or frustrated or hurt or disrespected or bored or disinterested or something like that. So identify what you're feeling and then identify what you need. Here's what I feel, here's what I need. When you have those clearly in mind, then at an appropriate moment, ask the other person if they're willing to hear some feedback from you. 
ask briefly with friendly eye contact, um, no explanation, just, excuse me, may I give you some feedback right now? That's all. Usually people will be curious, especially if you present that in a friendly way. Uh, although they might say no, or what do you want, why, or they may get defensive right away, but if they give you some sort of a green light, then say, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, tell you how your behavior is affecting me right now. One sentence, no elaboration, don't bring up the past, Just keep it simple, direct, good, friendly eye contact. The first part of a three-part I message, capital letter I, is a description factually, like a reporter would give, objectively, describe the other person's behavior or attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, what I've noticed is, um, in the last 15 minutes, you have interrupted me about five times. That's a factual description of their behavior, without moralizing, without criticizing, just um, be descriptive and clear about the other person's behavior. In the last 10 minutes, you haven't stopped talking once. In the last two hours, you've only given me eye contact two or three times. Are you aware of that? This is how it sounds to give factual, specific description of the other person's behavior without judgment. That's part one. Part two is tell the other person calmly, factually, clearly how their behavior affects you. And when you talk on and on and on and you don't pause to let me respond or you don't ask anything of me, I fill in the blank. I feel increasingly bored, disrespected, and I tune you out. Tell them how you feel. And the third part of an iMessage, which is optional, is you may then also add, and what I need from you now or over time, what I need from you is fill in the blank. Say specifically, without guilt, without anxiety, this is what I need from you. So an iMessage, which is a form of assertion, has three parts, an objective description of the other person's current or chronic behavior, an objective, clear, definitive statement of how their behavior affects you, what you're feeling, what you feel like doing, and the third optional part, ask them what you need from them, some sort of a change. Or you can say, you can also say, if you choose to keep doing behavior X. If you choose to keep doing that, here's what I'm going to do. If you continue to talk on and on and on for 10 or 15 minutes without pausing, I'm going to put my fingers in my ears. I want you to understand that means I'm bored and I'm tuning you out. It's not a put down. It's not a guilt trip. You're not being manipulative or controlling. You are informing them and then giving them a chance to choose their own behavior. The key to this is having a mutually respectful attitude. As I heard, I hope you heard in the other video, as in any communication, your chances of effective communication go up if you respect the other person's needs and dignity as much as your own. So, give a three-part I message or a two-part with mutual respect, and then what? We're not done. Other people, when they receive a message like this, <clears throat> depending on whether they're shame-based or not, uh, they can have many kinds of reactions. One might be, oh, gee, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Thanks for telling me. That's the best of all reactions. More commonly, people will become defensive, like, I didn't know I did that. I don't think you're accurate. I don't, I don't do that. They may deny, they may minimize, they may intellectualize, they may rationalize. Well, here's why. If I don't stop talking, then you're going to start talking and you never listen to me. 
whatever they may respond with, if it's something other than, gee, thanks for telling me. Um, I lump that under the general term of resistance. The key to an effective I message, as with all assertions, is to expect the other person to resist. It's human nature. They're not being bad. They're not schmucks. They're not cowards. They're being human. It's human for us to defend. If we think we're being attacked or if we, someone else says we're doing something bad or we think we're doing something bad, it's normal to be defensive. So expect the other person to, quote, resist you in some way. Don't judge them. Don't be impatient. Don't, don't be frustrated. Stay in your true self. Use the skill of empathic listening. To learn what that is, see my lesson two videos. In effect, it is saying back to the other person, factually, clearly, calmly, what you see and hear right now. <clears throat> that might sound like, so you feel I'm being um, oversensitive. Real brief, clear in your own language, and wait to see what they do. If they feel you just heard them well, they will say, well, yeah, or they will agree with you in some way. Then repeat your I message. And if you choose to continue talking on and on and on without letting me respond, I feel increasingly bored and I'm going to tune you out. And I need you to be more aware of me as we talk. Repeat your I message. Be prepared for more resistance. Because you're prepared, you can calmly use empathic listening, repeat back without judgment what you see, what you hear, um, and wait, and then repeat your two or three part I message. Do this as many times as it takes until you get one of several <clears throat> results. The other person will finally say, oh, all right, fine. And they may or may not. Um, continue or change their behavior or in the best of worlds they'll say well okay let's work on that I have trouble because I know I get caught up in my talking so give me a reminder if I'm talking too much let me know because I don't want you to tune me out I don't want to waste your time I don't want to bore you so just give me a, a heads up would you if you think I'm talking too much also know this um, I messages are just as effective with people's unpleasant attitudes as they are with their behavior. Uh, example, have you ever met somebody who was noticeably, chronically, quote, negative, you know, doom and gloom kind of a person? Most of what they would be fond of talking about was, Oh, this is the trouble I've got. Oh, things are going to go badly. Oh, you know, the world is going to hell. My kids are in trouble. Uh, I don't have enough money. My car isn't working. Blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, people have legitimate problems, but they can overdo it. And if you are uncomfortable with a person with any kind of an attitude, not just negativity, uh, for instance, if they're arrogant, um, if they're idealistic, if they're unrealistic. There are a number of different attitudes that can be really annoying and irritating and frustrating. If you uh, are aware of a person with an attitude that significantly bothers you, you can use the three-part I message format I just described to you just the same way. Excuse me, can I give you some feedback? Well, what? I don't know if you're aware, but frequently you seem to focus on the worst of things. It seems like you need to be a glass half empty person, and I need you to know that's a factual description of their, of their attitude. I need you to know that when you dwell so often on unhappy things, negative things, um, I start to feel badly myself, and I start to tune you out or I'd, I'd really rather not listen to that. Um, and I really wish you'd be more aware 
and try and focus on problems you're having as well as the good things that are happening to you. That's a quick example of how to use a three-part iMessage with an attitude that is significantly bothersome to you. Notice once again, it's not a put-down, it's not sarcastic, it's factual, it's delivered with a sense of mutual respect. Expect resistance, same thing. Use empathic listening, restate your iMessage, same principle. So this skill, this assertion skill, works equally with unpleasant behaviors and unpleasant attitudes. The goals of using iMessages are preserve your self-respect and integrity. I feel I'm doing something about my own discomfort. Preserve the relationship, if you can rather than harming it. And another goal is to be clearly heard. You wish the other person to hear you, hear what you're thinking and feeling. The goal is not to put the other person down, to make them feel guilty, to shame them, to hurt them. That's not what this is about. It's about providing useful information that will help you both get more of your needs met. That's what effective communication does. So, I hope you're at least curious about this technique and the next time life serves up an unpleasant person to you, think about practicing and delivering a two-part or a three-part I message. You may need to come back and review this video and refresh yourself. Give it a try. I want to uh, emphasize this works just as well with children as it does with adults. If you want more useful information about how to improve your communication, I hope you'll take a look at my other Lesson 2 videos. Thanks for watching.